practice. Yeah. <laughs> Vamos a comenzar, please. We are going to about to start. If you can tell the invisible person that we are going to about to start, please. Um, vamos a tener ahora una sesión. Collective activities to visualize gender violence and harassment. And my name is Alba Avila. I'm a professor at the Universidad de los Andes in Bogota, Colombia. And I hope you allow me to switch between English and Spanish because there are some emotions that will come out <laughs> in some images and data. So I just started my journey on gender after being aware that in the classroom, I treat the students equally. In the projects, I also involve the students equally in different activities. But many of the alumni came back to me saying that they got different salaries, they got different role activities and roles and projects outside the university, and even salaries. At that moment, I thought it's really important we only uh, we not only work in science, but we have to take this issue seriously. We have to talk about this in the university. And at that moment, many, many of the conditions and situations that you have described happened to me. I was on my own. I was the only professor in um, engineering, uh, electronic engineering department. I'm also a physicist. And the reason that I end up in the engineering faculty is because salaries are higher. So I don't know how it's in Brazil, but in Colombia, people working on physics get lower pay than people working in engineering. So that was one condition. There is another condition. I'm a really short woman, so it, ta it takes a role in my practice as a scientist, as an engineer. And it has been an advantage for me to have a double degree. Sometimes I work for the government in the education system, so I'm not an engineer. I have to deny I'm an engineer. And sometimes I work on the engineering sector, and I have to deny it, I'm a physicist. Because if I mention I have a double degree, all the colleagues are going to be on me because they said, we don't know who you are. So sometimes physics and engineering are not very well seen in a combined practice with the industry. So this is something that you have to keep in mind for people who are doing maths and physics. Uh, every time I talk in different countries, I listen to different experiences for people with double degrees. Keep that in mind. In Latin America, it's not very, there is no a positive response for that specific uh, professional trajectory. So after being on my own for quite a while, I decided to start talking to people in the law department, in the international uh, policies department, and in the social science department. And uh, instead of being on my own here, I decided to be muchas, con mucho ruido, y dejamos de ser muy pocas. <laughs> so this is an example for the invisible person. And so we start talking about what was going on in the academia. So what were the challenges, the problems, uh, the situations, and the conditions in terms of space and time. This is physics. I love physics, and I will mention that. Uh, in several occasions in the presentation. And we started asking what could be the actions that we can start uh, transforming the classroom into an inclusive classroom? What would be the actions that we have to tackle in order to have an inclusive uh, um, campus? And this is what happened. I believe in science. science is, uh, is, uh, this is what we use in engineering. We use the electromagnetic spectrum where you probably notice the dimensions where humans are represented. So there are some visible waves, and there are some invisible waves. So we have to tackle that in terms of the people, and especially the humans who are in the classrooms. And then we have to talk about the gender spectrum. So right now, science is a human activity at the service of other humans. And we cannot forget that. And this is going to be my main a message here. So humans working for other humans. And as a humans, we have many stereotypes. We have many 
uh, condition, situations, especially history situations that are related to the culture, to our families, to our surroundings, los entornos, si lo puedo decir en español. So we are here as a scientist, and we talk as a scientist, but anything that I'm doing here is, uh, is uh, how can I say, is a collective representation of what all the women in my history did for me and what I'm going to have an impact on the future generations. This is the way we are just one atom inside, uh, how do you call it, a uh, lattice structure. So we really have to work together. So in terms of science, there is a myth of neutrality. Every time we mention to our male colleagues, something is going on, they said, no, but we are treating everyone in the same way in the classroom. So anytime I write E equal to MC square is the same equation for all the eyes in the classroom. So they said that. <laughs> then I mentioned to them how is it possible that when they go into the job jobs, so not everyone look at them neutral. And that was one of the main concerns. So we cannot forget that who you are intersects our professional practices. So this is one example, so in terms of gender and in terms of other human expressions. I'm a hyperactive person, <laughs> and I have decided not to hide it anymore. So yesterday, people who run a human experiment with me dancing until 1.30 a.m., uh, they noticed that. So I always <laughs> practice rotational and translation and physics every time you listen, samba, and other rhythms. So it's physics, and hyperactivity is part of many, many human lives in science. Uh, some people try to control it, they take uh, medicines, and actually, like teaching in the university, in a class of 40 students, at least 10 are medicated because of uh, an obsessive disorder, attention disorder, or hyperactivity. But this is why you are, why you have to hide it, and why you have to have chemicals running into your body. Just accept it and live with it. I think we can, and you have seen people who are pretty hyperactive, and you enjoy uh, when they talk to you in an auditorium like this one. Give me one example of one person who came into this room, was hyperactive, and it was the most... It wasn't uh, you. It wasn't me, yeah, take me, out of, uh, take me out of the question, but the time that I heard in the auditorium a collective laugh as an expression of her emotions coming out in the stage was one person in the past two days. Who was she? Hubo una persona que cuando yo estaba ahí sentada, todos se reían porque la persona expresaba lo que era. Hay muchas, ¿no? Luna, ¿cuál otra vía? Marcia, sí, o sea. Hay que aprenderlo. So I don't think they are hiding their human expressions to be a scientist. And I, I think this is really a strong weapon that we have to keep because practices this human uh, expressions add instead of subtract. So in any class that I teach in science or in the engineering faculty, the first task in the first lecture is who you are. Tell me what are you different to the 41 million people who are living in our country. So how are you going to contribute with something different? Learning equation is easy. Working with math, I think all of us have done it before. But what is that unicity that you bring into science and it's going to contribute in a different perspective of seeing the same physical phenomena that others can observe. I don't think Newton was the only person who saw an apple dropping from a tree, but he was the only one who decided to use a specific language and a specific discipline to transform that knowledge, that phenomena into knowledge. And I think this is my invitation and the reason why I'm writing this. So when some people try to fit in, people have uh, very complex situations and humans are uh, complex species, at which there could be robots next time that we are in this conference. So the situation would be discussions on gender, but humans versus machines. So all sort of conditions and situations will emerge when you have several humans spending eight hours in the same space, sharing time and space in different classroom, laboratories, and any space in the campus. 
So what happened in our university is that we started listening to each other and all the harassment, labor harassment and sexual harassment cases came out. At that time, that was like eight years ago, there wasn't any sexual harassment protocol. So we started talking with the law department and people from the policies department that, that was needed and we worked together to create it. So right now there is a, a harassment policy in the university. But the students were having such a difficult time uh, coming out with the implementation of that protocol. So there has to be, like in the spectrum that I mentioned here, some visible waves and some invisible waves. Invisible people, too, are there. And uh, the thing is, we can work at the authority level, but there has to be some movement from the student, bottom up and top down. And that was the approach that they took. So they created this uh, website that I strongly suggest that you can have a look at. Uh, it's called No Es Normal. And it is not normal, and it's supposed to have a space in the digital world for anyone, anyone. It could be faculty, it could be uh, staff members, or it could be students who are running into any harassment case. So the way it, it works is they place a post or a meme or a video, any, any, any strategy of communication that will be available uh, when the situation happens, even just talking to another person and that person decided to post it for you. So one thing that this changed, it was the fact that students started to speak about it and understand and identify what is sexual and labor harassment. No every human will understand it. So, que profesor haga comentarios sobre atributos físicos de las y las estudiantes es acoso, que un profesor obligue a las y los estudiantes a bailar cuando llegan a clase es reconocido como acoso. And these situations are in the slides. Uh, of course, they have to be an object of study of the social scientists who help us to identify what were the specific characteristics of each situation. Because they thought it's funny, you know? Alba likes music, sometimes you can dance in the classroom, but if another professor is only asking students, female students, to dance when they get into the class, this is something different. So we can have the same practices, but probably with different purposes. Eh, a mejor no digas esto porque las feministas presentes se ponen bravas. So there are many science professors who make jokes about uh, any feminist expression in the classroom. En la última clase de ping pong a la que fui, el profesor me cogió la cintura para que doblara bien las rodillas. Y cuando me solté me dijo, ay, pero no te pongas nerviosa. So that was a normal practice in all the sports activities, but social scientists help us to identify that you shouldn't allow anyone to come in a very short distance to you unless there is a, ¿sí? Consent. Durante clase el profesor está tomándole las fotos a los estudiantes trabajando. Una niña pregunta, ¿para qué son esas fotos? Y el profesor responde, para un, una página porno que tengo. That happened in our university. No estabas cuando tomamos las decisiones. That was at the faculty level. You were not present when we run the decision process. Realizar bromas sexistas. Es cuestión del periodo, la menstruación. Esta falda no es de tu talla. Resolvamos esta discusión con un vino en mi casa esta noche. Esas son algunas, hay muchas. And uh, in Mexico, they started the same campaign, and I strongly suggest that as a region, we should have similar campaigns. Because there is also a cul cultural intersection that, that, that will play. I'm just going to share one story that happened to me, because I'm white, I'm short, and I look like a little kid. The way they refer to me is Albita. My name is Alba. And sometimes they call it little princess, the little engineer, the mini engineer, the nano engineer. So all sort of language shouldn't be allowed in any faculty discussion. So I started to call them the same way, and they didn't like it. So we set up some rules in, in meetings. Uh, that was another finding of this campaign. Only the 10% of the students in the university, they run a campaign in a digital survey. Only 10% recognized what was sexual harassment, especially the data was really bad in the science and engineering faculty. I think students from social science 
fields have more tools uh, to navigate this knowledge. This is the agenda for the events that are going to happen uh, this year. There is uh, now they read together books related to science and gender. They talk about sexual cases that are happening in the university, and this is. Uh, this is something that sh really shocked me in a negative way. Where I'm going to talk about the latest case I was uh, part of. So there is one professor who goes into the field with other students. He makes sexist comments to them. The students have one day at the university that is an open microphone, so anyone can say anything they wanted. So one student decided to talk about the professor. When the other ones listened, they started to add comments about the professors. Then parents listened to those comments. The professor mentioned this is a labor harassment for him. And he sued the students. Some of the students are between, I think, uh, 15 to 22 years old. In Colombia, the age of sexual consent is 18, so parents sue the professor. <laughs> <laughs> professor sue the parents. <laughs> Guess what? So now the president of the university needs to apply a sexual harassment protocol that wasn't meant to be for all of this complexity. It was supposed to be only in the relation between students and professors, but now it's against parents, and it gets worse and worse and worse. So we haven't made the final decision on this one, but this is how things scale up when these uh, cases happen in the university. Now we have... You, you, let me ask you yeah. This is not only engineering, is that right? This is open to all the university, but the good thing is because professors join in different faculties, in my university, we have 39 fac faculties. Uh, what happened there is the strong feminist law, lawyers took part of this discussion. Guess what? So anytime something is happening to the students and there is evidence and facts, the law professors stand up. There's not just one, there are 10 of them. When they go into any legal case, guess who win? <laughs> And any time we have a case, it could be just one word related to harassment case. We have a WhatsApp, we have all these social media, we share information. Have you worked with this professor? So we get data. Have you been in any committee with this professor? It's not just one person, because you know we have these power situations, and physics is uh, related to math, so then you have the horizontal and the vertical power. So we need to know what is happening between peers to get to know what is happening between hierarchies. And that knowledge uh, brings more attention to any situation related to sexual harassment. So if you are happen to be in Colombia, you want to go to any of those activities, those are also streamed online if you are interested. Um, this is one. There is another one, and this is a really... Um, interesting maybe for all of you who are also into the intersection of industry and academia. So the, there is one professor in the um, business school and she noticed that there are different salaries that oscillates between 44% to 4% depending on the uh, different uh, disciplines. 44 for CEOs in our country and that's a lot. So they are earning almost uh, half of what the male CEOs are earning. So she decided to create this campaign, the Igual Igual, and it's a campaign that was inspired by art. Art and science are together. So if I show you this picture, this is the New York subway. I don't know if someone has seen it before. Yeah, uh, so I'm gonna open quickly, quickly the microphone. I promise I won't be long. So what, who hasn't seen it? So if you look at that image, si ves esa imagen, ¿qué representa para ti? Que la, nos cuesta más mucho a nosotras, mucho más. Ellos suben directo. So a conventional staircase versus an automatic staircase. They have to go from one point to another. And is it going to be the same time? Is it going to be the same number of steps? 
Is it going to be the same work? Is it going to be the same energy? So it could be, it could be, a, um, it could be part of any physical, physical exam for me. Because you have to really calculate all the in, in, inertia, la inercia que usted tuvo que quitar ahí porque subir así o que me suba una máquina, pues todos sabemos que cambia, ¿no? So this was a um, campaign that was run in New York. So she decided to have the same campaign in the university. So the first impression to get into the campus was to look at some different distribution of the space that was located for male students and for female students. And uh, of course, the students just come and saw all of these colors, and there were people who explained to them uh, why it's different colors and how they, they have an um, impression of what was going on in there. So this is an artist, and uh, it's great if you can follow him. He's Kasanuri Shina. And, um, there are many countries who have copied his idea, of course, with copyrights. But the good thing is he works for Volvo. He works for uh, all the major manufacturing companies. So he noticed that in those companies, and he decided to act on it. And he wants to have a massive impression on citizens, because this is not only in campuses or in, 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 um, in the research centers. It's everywhere. So that was one. And then this professor went farther on the campaign. He created a poster that was like probably three floors of the uh, nightclub that we went yesterday. So it was like probably six meters. It was really visible. She placed it at the entrance of another building in campus. So everyone started looking at the data. And this is some of the information that was in the poster. I wasn't involved. My other colleagues were not involved. But all the male colleagues took action on us. They said, oh, you are the one providing this information to this female professor. You are against us. And for a week, we couldn't share coffee. We couldn't talk to each other. The president of the university had to cancel all the meetings because this was uh, the two extremes of the spectrum. They didn't want to talk. They didn't want to interact until the president released a notice that it wasn't us, it was her. But because she's in the business school, business school makes a lot of money for the university, they didn't do anything because they benefit from her. So that's another kind of things that you have to be prepared for. Taking the risk of doing something means that there's gonna be some action back. So who said that? Action and reaction, physics. So this is another one. So if you allow me, I can play one of the videos for one of those campaigns. And I can also make uh, an invitation for you. Um, I'm recognized in my university because I'm the no professor. <laughs> no professor means that I will transform the no into a different language, into a different action, which is on. So anytime that anyone has a no for, an an for a response for any answer, and come to me, lo voy a transformar en un sí se puede. Y lo hacemos de otra forma. ¿Por qué? Porque traemos la parte humana que nos hace diferentes. No hay científicos. And this is my invitation. Just look around. Look around all the people who are in the, in the auditorium. Tell me who has the same pair of glasses. Tell me who has the same color of eyes. Well, we have from the same brand. Mm -hmm. Which brand is that one? Rain. What is it called? They're the same. What? They are the same material, very light. <laughs> uh, but you know, there is so much diversity that why we have to hide it? Why we have to hide our humanity? Because we are working on science or engineering. So just one video, and I uh, will pass it to Silvina. So, Lilia, this is no es normal. No es normal comenzó también con una campaña que es me comprometo. So for most of the professors who are listed in harassment cases, students go to their office and they interview them. And this is really a straightforward exposition to these harassment cases. So they make a commitment that they are not going to do it again. Some of them agree, some of them don't agree. But still, this is an action that is providing some uh, strategies in the university. 
this is an, another activity they are trying to carry on, and I will show it here just to show the, the composition of the panel there. So here is one science student, and then there are two professors, and they try to combine um, trans, male, and female professors. And there has to be discussion inside of the campus and debate. So these two professors, they don't agree, which is good for science. Otherwise, it's going to be like a filter of half of the information that we need to process. So this is one of the other activities. And this is 060, es la revista que están sacando con notas. La inequidad de género nace en la infancia, pasa por la universidad y se arraiga en el ámbito laboral. And I don't think we are educating people to be unemployed, to be unhappy, to be frustrated, and to go through an, an, uh, uh, ¿cómo lo llaman? Uh, crisis de ansiedad en sus carreras, anxiety, anxiety crisis in their professional careers. Because that will be really sad. Just one human here looking at another 40 humans who are going to go through a negative experiences in their lives. I don't want that. So something has to be done regarding this topic. This is the video. I'm just going to select one. She is, she is the professor who uh, lead this campaign. And this campaign provides this data. And I'm not going to go through the data. I'm just going to show you. 39 departments. She opened up the data for the admission registration, for faculty, for salaries, for mental health issues. So nowadays, what the president needs to show to the international accreditation that we are a gender inclusive campus. Guess whose data he's using? Her data. So she has the power. She has to update this data every two years. So somehow they raise their voice, and this is, this is paying off. So if you have friends in the business school, get them. Especially if the university is sponsored by all the university fees. It's just a short video. I'm not sure if the sound is... Don't listen to me what's happening. En esta sociedad no podemos seguir aceptando que haya desigualdad por el género al que pertenecemos. Eh, no puede ser que a los hombres le paguen más que a las mujeres, no puede ser que a las mujeres las discriminen en el trabajo. Por el hecho de ser mujeres, todos estamos en las mismas condiciones de hacer todas las cosas y debemos tener las mismas oportunidades. Eh, una experiencia donde la equidad no la haya visto es en mis clases porque dicen como no, la carrera de comunicación es para niñas, mientras que hay muchos hombres que en verdad son muy buenos en la carrera y a veces entran como a sentirse mal y como en un prejuicio social porque pues supuestamente la carrera es para niñas. En alguna ocasión mandamos un correo masivo en femenino y un chico nos escribió como eh, ni al lenguaje ni a mí nos interesan sus estupideces feministas. Por ejemplo una vez estaba en clase, yo estudié arte, eh, y dejé la entrega que tenía sola en un escritorio, me fui, cuando volví, un amigo mío, hombre, eh, la estaba revisando y el profesor creyó que era suya y empezó a darle, una, a darle unas críticas eh, positivas, le encantaba lo que había hecho, le parecía que era eh, muy bueno, todo, y cuando yo llegué y dije que era mío, empezó a decirme que no le gustaba tanto porque le parecía un tema muy femenino, muy cursi. Una mujer que tenía todas las capacidades, todas las aptitudes, la hoja de vida perfecta para un cargo y se lo dieron a un hombre porque era hombre, porque era amigo de uno de los miembros de la junta directiva. He sido testigo de muchísimos actos de inequidad de género. Como hombre, pues por supuesto lo veo desde una posición de privilegio en la que muchas veces le dan prioridad a lo que yo estoy diciendo versus lo que puede decir una colega en alguna reunión eh, laboral, eh, creo que es clarísimo y es eh, cotidiano ver cómo la, las voces de los hombres son privilegiadas por encima del de sus equivalentes. Que estaba hablando con un amigo de mi carrera y le comenté que me parecía triste que en la Facultad de Ingeniería Química solamente había una profesora o, o menos, casi no hay mujeres, y me dijo, pues primero se rió y me dijo que eso demostraba que los hombres eran mejores y que mínimo a ella le había tocado pues con palanca o acostarse con alguien. Pues mi hermana trabaja en una consultora y un día 
Un compañero le dijo que por qué no se iba de secretaria, que para eso estaban las mujeres. Había un profesor de ingeniería extranjero y como pues muchos extranjeros tienen un acento muy marcado, entonces a veces no se les entiende bien cuando hablan. Una estudiante mujer le dijo al profesor que si por favor le podía repetir lo que había dicho, no porque no le entendiera el contenido, sino porque no le había entendido lo que él había dicho. En ese momento el man, pues el profesor, se devuelve y le dice como, ¿Usted, ¿a usted le gusta el arroz? Y ella dijo como, sí, ¿usted sabe hacer arroz? Y ella como, sí, ¿cómo se hace el arroz? Y ella pues cayendo en todo, fue como, no, pues, tanto de agua, tanto de arroz, ni idea. Y al final el profesor le responde como, bueno, ¿por qué no va y hace lo que sabe hacer en vez de preguntar lo que él no sabe? a Facebook and a Twitter account for the event that I strongly um, suggest you join. I have been taking pictures of you. If someone has a problem that we publish those photos, please let me know. Sí, dale. I didn't understand how the uh, artwork worked in your place, that there was not an es escalator like in the... New York oh, yeah. subway. And the other thing I wanted to say was they chose pink and blue. Is that okay? I guess so. It I was, mean, because it was part like of the, the message. The, yeah, because of the stereotype. In, in our case, we didn't have like a, an automatic. And we only have conventional staircases, but the way the, the patterns were distributed, it was different. It was larger for males symbols that for female symbols. And it becomes even short, um, how do you Narrow. call it? Narrower as you went up. Mm. Yeah. El, el artista es muy abierto, colabora con todo, él supervisó todo lo que hicimos y mandaba comentarios cuando los estudiantes estaban pensando en eso. Entonces, esa es importante. Y si se quieren unir, por favor, esta es la página de la universidad, pero también necesito que, ojalá no salga nada indebido cuando abra el mío. <risa> eh, estamos acá para que nos busquen en el grupo Increasing Diversity. Ahí hemos puesto todas las fotos y si es importante que compartan la información. Eh, y específicamente, pues... Ahí van a ver muchas. Si hay alguien que tiene alguna inconveniente, por favor, que nos avise, porque no hicimos consentimiento. Y como todo se trata de hacer experimentos, y los experimentos son humanos, vamos a hacer nuestra primer, les voy a hacer la invitación a Silvina y Lilia, que me permiten hacer nuestro primer esfuerzo colectivo acá en Sao Paulo. Eh, ayer tuvimos una situación que vamos a compartir con ustedes, y dada esa situación, a toda, a toda acción hay una reacción, entonces vamos a trabajar en física con eso. Entonces te invito a ti para que tú lo hagas. Si quieres, describes, ¿qué quieres? ¿Coloco aquí algo? Sí. ¿Qué coloco? Puso, puso en, la foto, ¿En, ¿En dónde la pongo? Eh, ¿En cuál medio? Yo tengo, no sé, tengo el, ah, sí, la filmina. Tú lo abres ahí. Lo que dice. en la UFA, ese artista es, es bueno contactarlo. Sí, porque sacamos nuestra palabra. No me acuerdo de mi... ¿O la tienes en tu computadora? La tengo en mi teléfono. Pues manda de tu teléfono al mío. Sí. Aquí está el mío. Ah, mi correo. No sé si alguien quiere ir contando al menos un esfuerzo que haya mientras si no, ponemos... Si no, vamos a estar después de lo de Lidia. ¿Sí? Sí, entonces lo vamos a hacer después de la profe Lilia, ¿sí? Ya lo pongo yo. Sí, sí, sí. Okay, so I have to uh, this evening a presentatón, <laughs> and this is the first presentation.
Ok. 